So if you're not blasting off stacks, as we've said in a few sessions lately, Jack, if you're not blasting off the occasional stack, if you're not making hero calls that make you uncomfortable, if you're not willing to make the big courageous moves in poker that will leave you extremely vulnerable, the likelihood yeah. is, is you're not going to reach the top. You can play safe if you want. Nice ABC, protect yourself, no vulnerability, never make big hero calls, never make big river bluffs, but you're going to plateau. You're going to be in the middle of the pack and eventually people around you are going to overtake you. We're in. All right, so we are in there. Uh, I think it's been like a month. It has something. been a little while. It's been a minute. It's been it's been a couple minutes. Yeah, it's been a couple, been a couple minutes. minutes. But, um, so for we're doing April's review now, and actually later on today we'll do uh, we'll do May. We'll switch we'll switch you... shirts. And people will. Uh... I was gonna I was gonna like put the cap on backwards and change the t-shirt, but you've spoiled it now. That's it. You just stay where <laughs> I am. We're gonna do it anyways to pretend like it's it's on two different days. But um, so April's book was Braving the Wilderness, Indeed. and I mean I gave it an eight out of ten. But I had like kind of I had mixed feelings about this book when I first started reading it because I've read another book by Brene Brown. Okay. Uh, and it was like it was okay. I think it was called The Power of Vulnerability. Yeah. I mean it was interesting. Some parts were interesting, but it was I don't know. When I was first reading this book, I remember like the first like 30 or 40 percent of it, I was like, "What is this garbage?" I'm gonna give it like a four out of ten. <laughs> sure. It was like, it, it just seemed like a book that was like more. I don't know. It's just I, I I don't know. I just wasn't intrigued by the first 30 or 40 percent of it. But then it started getting a little bit deeper, and I started understanding where she was going with it. Because at first I was like, "Where is she going with this?" It was just like so. It started off really slow. Mm-hmm. I didn't really understand like where she was headed with some of these random stories she was just saying about her childhood and stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was hard to resonate with because it was like, um, it was kind of situations where like probably girls would be able to resonate with in their childhood. But like for guys, it would be, it's a little bit more difficult to understand like what she was going through and you know, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, but, but then it started picking up and overall I give it eight out of 10 because there are some really good points in this book. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, so let's just let's just get straight into it. Let's let's get straight into the into the notes here, Mister Okay, right. so uh, eight out of ten, which is low on the Jack Stack scale, but still somewhat reasonable. It's not up there with the Eckhart. It's not with the Eckhart Tolls of the world, but it'll do. Oh, no. It'll do. Yeah. Okay. A uh, hey, authenticity trumps. Oh, I struggled with that word, didn't I? Authenticity trumps everything. Mm. Um. Okay, yeah, so I guess, I mean, that one speaks for itself really, doesn't it? Got to be real. Got to keep it real, Jack. Yes, yeah. keep it ever so real. And you know, this. This, this one this one is kind of interesting, though. I, I know it sounds very basic, mm-hmm. um, but I think it's something that, you know, naturally, you know, humans, like, we kind of stray away from authenticity without even realizing it sometimes. Mm-hmm. So that's why I thought this one was kind of interesting because, you know, we're always like told like you should act this way. You should behave in that way. You should say these things. You should be polite even though you don't mean it. Um, yeah. Authenticity in, in this way, she's saying like if you don't like something and somebody asks you, you just tell them like, you know, I don't like it. Like somebody's like your, your wife or your girlfriend asks you like, do you like this dress that I'm wearing? And if you're not, if you're not really feeling it, you're like, you know what? It's not my style. Like I don't really like it that much. It's really just like not filtering. Mm-hmm yourself and speaking your truth regardless of if it's going to hurt somebody's feelings or not you're still going to speak your truth sure you can like soften it a little bit yeah you never want to cross the line of like being inauthentic by saying something that's just completely not um what you feel about the situation right Uh, and it's like we have so much social pressure to be a certain way to say certain things like a lot of times we we sometimes lose that authenticity um until we kind of like peel back the layers and then we're just like, shit, you know, if you really think about it, you're like, maybe I haven't been so authentic in this moment or in this situation or whatever. And, uh, and yeah. it's just nice to, to, to kind of go back into that authentic 
uh, kind of mode because even when you meet somebody, sometimes you might meet a certain somebody yeah. and you're trying to put on this front like that you're cooler than you are or you're smarter than you are or you're, you know, more knowledgeable about a certain topic than you are and we're just, we, we can't like sometimes just be like, you know what, I don't know anything about that topic and, you know, just kind of like let our, um, let our guard down, you know, because we have our guard up a lot on a lot of, with a lot of people in life or, you know, in, in some situations and, this book talks yeah. about just like just just let the guard down and truly be authentic and vulnerable. We're gonna get to that in point number two. Why don't we just jump straight to point number two and then we'll Yep. We'll continue. Point number two, you can't have courage without being vulnerable. They go hand in hand. Um it's kind of flies in the face of intuition. I don't think people would generally link uh vulnerability and courage, to be quite honest. I can I can see where this is coming from. Like it quite often actually takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable. Um, but I'm not sure how it works the other way around. So I'll defer to on, to you on this sure. one. Sure. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, like if you, if you, if you're doing something courageous, right? Like just give me Scott, give an example of something that you would do that would take a lot of courage from you. It's something that you naturally probably wouldn't do but it's like if you were, were to be really courageous you would do this certain something it could be like anything really hero call the the river with middle pair yeah and, and then like naturally that's going to make you vulnerable you know it's going to make you vulnerable to losing your stack like or it's like let's say you have the courage to um tell somebody off let's say somebody's been treating you in a very disrespectful way yeah right somebody's been like walking all over you let's say for example and then you show up with the courage, you puff your chest out, and you're like, you know what, I don't appreciate the way, you know, you've been treating me or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That puts you in a very vulnerable position. So some people don't don't realize that. It's like that courage and vulnerability are really, they really go hand in hand. Like another example is like, for me personally, like taking improv classes, it's a very courageous act from my perspective. For somebody else, they might be like, oh, that's not a big deal. From my perspective, like that's like, that takes a lot of courage for me to want to do that. Yeah, but it also ex puts me in an extremely vulnerable situation as well because like now I'm being judged by other people and like True. who knows what they're gonna say. Like they might laugh at me, they might do this and that. Um, so so before I remember like before I read this book, I always thought of like vulnerability as being um, like kind of a weakness in a sense where you're kind of like giving your power away. You're like you're you're, you're you're, you're, you're kind of weakening up or whatever. But then like, you know, the way she explains it is just like anything you do that's courageous is going to, is going to have you be vulnerable. So vulnerability is really strength because it's, it's, it's tied in with courage. Yeah. Um, so being vulnerable is not a bad thing at all. And that's the other, the other book that she had was called the power of vulnerability. Right. So yeah, she was kind of like preaching that home is like so, so many people were scared to be vulnerable you know, and, and this goes for a lot of men, you know, a lot of guys that are trying to put up this tough guy image, you know, put on all this, like, you know, a tough guy, I don't need to be vulnerable, I'm stronger than that, you know, this and that. But by doing that, they're not acting in a courageous way, which makes them actually, you know, weaker. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, which is which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, but yeah, I thought that was kind of an interesting... I, interesting I actually saw point. a pretty good example of this today. Um, mm -hmm. Funny timing. Um, that girl just pulled out of the, I say girl, sorry, lady, woman, female tennis mm -hmm. player, um, Osaka, her name is, I think it's Maria Osaka, or something Osaka, she just pulled out of the uh, Australian Open, I think, tennis tournament, mm -hmm. so she sailed through the first round, and she said, I'm not going to talk to the press throughout the tournament, mm -hmm. um, she said, because like, I'm, my mental health struggling a little bit at the moment, and I, I don't really want to like uh, um, the critics like firing questions at me and doubting me is sort of like giving me anxiety so she's like I'm not going to talk to the press and they're like well it, you're, you're contractually obligated to talk to the press I don't know if you can hear that car alarm by the way good timing yeah, that's all right. yeah, let, 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 me, let me shut <laughs> my window one Where sec I'm living in the ghetto here so that car alarm could be going off all night long ah there it goes <laughs> perfect thanks, okay. ev thanks everyone for sticking with us uh, back to the the female tennis player. Anyway, long story short, she said, I'm not talking to the press. They said, you're you're obligated to do so. They fined her and they said, if you don't do it, there's going to be sanctions. 
and the press just like went crazy calling her like petulant and saying she's like misbehaving and she's arrogant blah 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 and she was like okay withdrew from the tournament herself um Oh, petulance is a good word, but I've never heard that in my life. <laughs> yeah, pe I mean, she wasn't being petulant. It was extremely harsh from the critics. But, like, obviously journalists turned on her because she wouldn't talk to them. Um, yeah. And so she was like, okay, like, I'll withdraw from the tournament. And she did. And now everybody's kind of left holding the bag. Like, oh, God, she kind of got bullied out of it. And someone tweet like, the, the, like, the Twitter thread, like, the number one response was, like, I really respect your vulnerability. And it was, mm. it's an extremely, it's a really courageous thing to do to step out of the tournament. I think that that's like, that's a big deal. And she's going to attract yeah. a lot of press and a lot of negative press as well for doing that. So it's a pretty courageous step to, in, in order to effectively protect her mental health, but it also made her supremely vulnerable. And she's admitted yeah. her vulnerability. I mean, withdrawing from a tournament and saying mentally, like I'm not feeling well enough to do this. And pulling out of a tournament as a result that is an extremely vulnerable thing to do you know a hundred percent a hundred percent and like that kind of reminded me of like another also another example that that kind of will drill this point home let's say like let's say you're on a basketball let's say you're playing basketball you're on the basketball team yeah and you're taking the game winning shot that's a very courageous ballsy thing to do yeah like someone puts the ball in your hand you're taking that game winning shot and at the same time you're very vulnerable too because if you miss that shot you're gonna face all the criticism all the bullshit people are, oh it's your fault that 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 we lost or whatever so yeah you know on the other side of courage is being vulnerable so you can't you can't do anything courageous without being vulnerable so the point is to not to not um tr like to try not to avoid vulnerability to, to actually be vulnerable and to realize when you're vulnerable, you're yeah. actually being courageous. Like it's a very ballsy thing to do and not a lot of people are willing to do that. So yeah. vulnerability is actually a, a very firm strength is, is the biggest thing I found from Brene Brown in, in these two books that she writes. So being vulnerable is an absolute power as opposed to like a weakness that a lot of society thinks that it's a weakness. Like, oh, why would you put yourself in a vulnerable position, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but that's actually a very powerful thing to do because only very courageous people can put themselves in vulnerable positions. So yeah, so that's, I'm gonna, that's, I'm gonna quickly know. tie this one into poker just before we move on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, vulnerability and poker success are like, just, um, they're just intertwined basically. And if you don't embrace vulnerability um, and the effectively the volatility that comes with it you're never really going to reach the upper echelons of the game it's kind of it's so closely re related to comfort zone a good example of that like i noticed that my big blind heads up um against recreationals was was good but not exceptional uh for a couple of months i was like kind of plateauing and my win rate was kind of mediocre and i realized like i'm losing a lot in red line i'm not really being very aggressive so i was like okay i need to start integrating some more aggressive strategies and that included stepping into the unknown adding in some check raises that I wouldn't ordinarily do it and a lot of donking and a lot of barreling just to test how that went and there's not really that much information out there about how that's going to go and it made me extremely vulnerable and it means that sometimes I punt off a stack and have mm -hmm. to and there's always that sharp feeling of pain I, like anyone watching this will feel the same if you say that you don't feel it you're a liar that's 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 how struggling I feel about this when you punt off a stack or when you blast off a stack and you get called on the on the river you get that little little sort of negative feeling. I don't know any poker player that's totally immune to it. I don't know anyone that can jam the river, get cooled, and be like, I'm really happy about that. Or I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm satisfied with my play or I made the right move. Regardless of, of whether it's the correct play or not, we're all going to be at least somewhat results oriented. And so when you get cooled on the river, you get that little stabbing feeling of pain. All right. But as I was saying, that often is the right thing to do and you have to be vulnerable to feeling that pain in order to maximize your win rate so if you're not blasting off stacks as we've said in a few sessions lately jack if you're not blasting off the occasional stack if you're not making hero calls that make you uncomfortable if you're not willing to make the big courageous moves in poker 
that will leave you extremely vulnerable, the likelihood yeah. is, is you're not going to reach the top. You can play safe if you want. Nice ABC, protect yourself, no vulnerability, never make big hero calls, never make big river bluffs, but you're going to plateau. You're going to be in the middle of the pack and eventually people around you are going to overtake you and you won't overtake anyone else. So there's a, there's a serious link here between what's being said in this book and, and success in poker. And the best poker players in the world, at one point or another, all of the best players have played a hand that people will say they don't like. They're going to divide opinion. They'll probably make a play that people will say is bad, and maybe it is bad. You know, you watch Doug Polk against Daniel Negreanu. Both players made plays that people were like, I don't agree with this. But you don't reach that upper limit unless you take some risks and, and step outside of your comfort zone. So, yeah, embrace the vulnerability for poker 100%. Yeah, I mean, vulner vulnerability is also like another way of saying it is like uncertainty as well. Like where it's yeah. just like you're in a very uncertain, you know, situation or circumstances. And, and, and going off what you said about the poker, I get this feeling a lot. Like when I'm playing live poker, let's say for example, you're playing live poker, right? Because online, I get that feeling too. The exact thing you're talking about. Yeah. But it's to a less extent because there's only like 10 or 15 seconds for villain to act. So you have like that 10 or 15 seconds of feeling vulnerable as they're timing down. You know. Mm -hmm. Live poker, let's say, you make a really courageous check raise river bluff. Like, like you throw in your stack, all in. This guy bets. You check raise river bluff, all in. Such a courageous move. Maybe it's the best move. That's why you took it. It's courageous. But then, while he's timing down, while he's in the tank, Fuck. you are so vulnerable. You are feeling that vulnerability so much, and it, and it's caused from that uncertainty. But the thing is, like, if that's the best play then that's the best play, right? You can't, if you're trying to, to play poker and trying not to be vulnerable, you're not going to play well, right? Because you're going to take the safe, the safe option. You're like, oh, you know what? I could check raise river bluff here, Yeah. but I'm not going to do it because I don't want to feel this, like this guy might go into, into the tank for a couple of minutes. I don't want to like be vulnerable like that. So you're like, I'll just, I'll just fold, whatever. Yeah. Let's just, let's just get rid of this. I don't want to check raise river bluff. I don't want to get involved. Let's yeah. just fold. Move on to the next hand, right? So. So yeah, so that those two are, are, are hand in hand. So next time somebody tells you, next time you hear that vulnerable word, just realize that that's associated with strength, not weakness. weakness. Yeah. So next one, let's go to the next one here.